protecting whatever I do. I do it to protect you. So you understand? I understand. Rebellion is all that remains to push back the Empire. We think you might be able to help us. When was the last time you were in contact with your father? What is this? It appears he is critical to the development of a super weapon. If my father built this thing, we need to find him. All right. How many do I need? They are requesting a call sign. It's, um, Rogue. Rogue One. The power that we are dealing with here is immeasurable. If the Empire has this kind of power, what chance do we have? We have hope. Rebellions are built on hope. Hold of this moment. The force is strong. Make ten men feel like a hundred. We'll take the next chance. And the next. You're all rebels, aren't you? Save the rebellion! Save the dream! Give it up, guys. Yeah. This is so cool. So nice here. I mean, this is perfect. I'm just going to do this for the rest of my promotions. This is what you want? Just come here and that's it. Just get round after round of applause from a live audience. I mean, the, it's good. not just about the applause, but it's just a, such a cool place. I mean... Well, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. I got to say, man, you're in a Star Wars movie. Am I? <laughs> you, yes, you are. You are in a Star Wars movie. What does that feel like? Um, it's it's interesting. It, 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 there's moments of excitement. There's obviously a connection with the fan I've been for so many years. Uh, there's moments where I freak out. Uh, <laughs> the, there's moments where where they ask me stuff like, "How does it feel to have an action figure?" And I go like, "What? I, I, I don't know." I mean, yeah, it's like you, if you there's process no that too answer much, for it's... that. There's no one that can tell you, oh, it feels like this, and uh, in a month it's going to be like this. And No, there's no way to predict what's coming, you know? Tell, talk to me about how long it took you to get the role, what the process was like getting it, and the moment you found out you had it. Yeah. So one day I was in, uh, this was two years ago, I was in L.A., and I received a call from, from my agent saying, uh, Gareth Edwards wants to meet you. And I was like, about what? Would it, no. We don't know anything. The only thing we know is he's preparing Rogue One. And I was like, shit. <laughs> but, you know, the, the first thing I thought is like, oh, after Rogue One, he's going to want to do a tiny independent movie, and he wants me for that. Uh, because that's how you kind of perceive yourself and, as, well, as, as an actor? Well, I, I don't wake up saying like, oh, I want to do a Star Wars film. I'm, I'm going to go work out to make sure <laughs> I'm ready for when Star Wars comes. Like, no one thinks like that. I mean, at least not myself. I, I was just like living my life in Mexico. And so anyway, I got this call. I go to a restaurant and he's there. And I think this is going to be like a 15 minute meeting uh, where he just wants to see me and say hi and figure out who, who, who that actor is. In order to one day probably think about a role I could play, but not like he was going to tell me something. And he starts whispering uh, in the restaurant and looking back. You know, every time a waiter would come, he would just pretend not to be talking about that. And he starts talking about Star Wars and about the film he is going to shoot. And he starts telling me the story. And I go like, what? What is he doing? You know? And he and he's like, and then this man, and uh, so this man grabs this and does that, and then the man, and I go like, is he? 
telling me he wants me to play that man or but I, I didn't ask him you know I was afraid of getting a no 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 <laughs> No, I just need the phone of your friend. Uh, what's his name? Uh, anyway, so I was like, I'll stay here. <laughs> he was going to ask for somebody else's phone number. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, I made it a little bit of a joke, but it's kind of true. I was afraid of, of getting a no, 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 no. I'm not offering you anything. I don't want you to play this role. I just, I'm just telling the, you the story I'm working on. What and are way, you doing? You're going to pick up the check today, too. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then he opens his computer and starts showing me designs and stuff. And, and I just went like, wow, this is amazing, uh, but I don't know what to do with this information. And then he says, like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to propose you as the actor to play Cassian, and I just want to know if you want to, because we're going to have to go into a journey of going through filters that, you know, we have to pass, yeah. um, stages we have to pass for you to get the role. And I went like, yes, perfect. And then it was five months of putting myself on tape, flying to London, uh, a month of not hearing anything from him and then going like, shit, this is over. Um, and then one day at 2 a.m. in the morning, I'm sleeping in, in, in a hotel in Budapest. I'm, I was shooting something else there. And, uh, and, I, and my phone rings and I go and I see like a British number, you know, it started 4-4. Four, four, and I went like, oh, this, I, I have family in England. Mm. Half of my family is British, so I thought it was like a drunk cousin or something. And I went like, oh, I'm not going to answer it. And as soon as it stops ringing, I go like, oh, Gareth. Damn, Gareth. And I go, and it was Gareth. And I call him, and, and he's just, he, I mean, <laughs> he's sharp. So the first thing he says is like, welcome to the world of Star Wars. Wow. And I just go like, wow. <laughs> I started shouting and like I became the happiest Mexican in the planet, I'm sure. <laughs> but then he says, don't tell anyone. And suddenly everything goes like, it's, it's like a bad joke, right? Like, How long did, did you go without being able to tell anybody? Like three months almost, wow. three, four months, yeah. So you know, so it hadn't been, it wasn't announced for three or four months No, no, after. no, it wasn't announced. Uh, for the mo I, I finished that project, I went back to Mexico, I kept going with my life. I started packing to go to London and then it came out. Uh, and it was a leak, it was not, not even them, they, they would torture me till today probably. But, uh, but uh, someone leaked it and, uh, and, uh, and then everyone was like, all my friends were like, why you didn't tell me, man? You know, you go like, come on, it's so so. Star you Wars. have like you have three months basically from the moment where you meet him in a restaurant, and then you know he says, "Do you want to go with me on this journey where I'm putting you forward?" And you have to go through all these filters. Five were, months of that. Five months of that. Yeah. Were there other people that were also in the running at the time that you knew of, or was it just kind of like getting you get, getting you through the filters? I'm sure before there was someone else, but uh, there was. Uh, and I don't remember exactly when it happened, but one day he clearly said, "You, you, I want to do this film with you." Right. So now it's you and I trying to convince everyone else, basically. Did uh, he have a film of yours that he was uh, sort of the biggest fan of? Exactly. Made him want to do that? Uh, no, no. I, I mean, I didn't want it to ask because <laughs> I asked Harmony Corinne once, and he said, "Have a night," and I go like, "Oh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what?" I don't yeah, know. Harmony Green's got weird taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was expecting Itu Mama Tambien or some, you know, weird Mexican film no one watched. And no, he went for that one. So and now I don't ask that. Right. Uh, <laughs> but um, but but there was a, there was a, a reason, a clear reason for me, and it's that the he wanted to bring like a feel of realism, like an intimacy to these characters, the approach to, 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 to yeah, intimate moments where you could actually be there with them. And, uh, and yeah, bring that realistic feeling in, in this world was, was uh, something he, he really wanted to do in this film, you know? It is a huge film and there's shots of like, the, the epic shots we want to see in a Star Wars film, but then you have moments where you're, you're really close to the characters. And, uh, and the approach is like a tiny independent film, you know? It was what seven of us doing it inside of a room, forgetting about everything else, you know? And is they, that difficult to do, to sort of create that intimate, that, that, that intimate space on a set that is massive and has many people also, like, you know, filters, as you said, you know? And, and it's not just that, it's the, 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 the whole, you know, 
feeling of, 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 of talking about a parallel world, you know? The, the, it's, it's tough to arrive to a science fiction film and, 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 uh, and make it feel personal and unique and, 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 uh, and real, you know? It's very easy, you go to, you start playing, oh, we're in space, or we're... And, and this had to feel like, yeah, we're grabbing the car and going to, you know? Even more so than last year's Force Awakens, it has to feel like a different movie, but still within the same universe, which is very difficult. Yeah, or not, or very exciting, you yeah. know, because, and also for someone like Gareth that knows every film perfectly, you know, he has studied every film first as a fan, then as a filmmaker, and now uh, as part of his job. So, uh, yeah, you start going like, well, how would they would have done this? And then let's do it in a different way. And uh, and and it's kind of cool, and the the modern approach to Star Wars and the idea of like yeah go do a different film go find another way to vi revisit this universe you know and at the same time we're it's a homage to that genesis of Star Wars because we happened just before Episode Four so so we live in the world in a world that was created in the seventies you know wow. where it's like kind of like the, this the, this galaxy far far away is a vintage idea of what people thought in the 70s the future will be, you know? Oh, that's so cool. That's such an interesting world. Now, a lot has been made of the uh, reshoots that took place, uh, I think, half, like after, after initial production was done. What was that uh, like for you and the other actors to sort of come back and kind of recreate the world once again? It's, uh, everything gets out of proportion when you do Star Wars. It's, yeah. it's like, uh, we do that in every film. That's part of my contract, you know? It says... After four months of editing, you're going to come back for a certain amount of weeks, whatever is needed, to do what, what we couldn't achieve to make it the best film we can make, you know? Uh, I did that in Mr. Pig. I had like a week and a half of reshoots of a, of a film that lasted seven weeks. And that's your, that's, your, that's your new film that you directed, right? That's a film I directed. It's just that nobody cares about it. You know? <laughs> so no one writes like, oh my God, Diego Luna just wasted seven weeks of, of shooting and now has to do reshoots. And Diego Luna's Danny vision Glover is, is <laughs> freaking out. And no, just no one cares. You know, films are films and we, there's nothing different about the way we shot this one. It's just that everyone is paying attention. And it's Every a weird feeling and you have to find a way to avoid that pressure to, 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 yeah, to be part of your everyday because you want to be clear and you want to do the best film you can and, and sometimes that pressure can play against that. Yeah, is that kind of nerve-wracking that where you're working on a project that anything about it can make a headline. Any, any news, any, anything about it could be a headline that day. Exactly. It's like, I, I'll tell you one image I'm never going to forget is when I said like, shit, this is crazy. Uh, yeah, uh, we were shooting like the first week of shooting in England, uh, an hour and a half away from London, uh, as far as possible from, uh, from the press or in fans or anything. And they build this amazing set and we had to arrive in cars because the first gate was like so far from where we were shooting, you know, there was like rings of security. And so you get there, you start shooting and then there's a, a helicopter, you know, and you go like, That's, that helicopter is too low, right? Is this, what is he doing? And then we, we stare at him and, and we realize there's a guy hanging with a wire you know, and, uh, and a huge lens taking pictures from the sky, but out of the helicopter, completely out, his whole body. He saw many, you know, Tom Cruise films and decided he could play the, yeah, the Mission Impossible thing. So he was hanging like this, taking pictures, risking his life for a picture of us looking like, what are you doing, <laughs> you know? Uh, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Like a pop that's the first that week. Like rented a helicopter. That's the first week. Things like that kept happening over and over. And, and that's what this film generates, you know, for good and bad. I mean, the great feeling is that the, 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 the website that was selling the, 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 the pre-sale of tickets just crashed in the first hour or something like that. That's amazing, an amazing feeling. Knowing people's going to watch your film and that there's that energy, that love for what, what, what you're doing, the project you're part of is so special. But then the other part is kind of like disturbing. <laughs> How does that feel for you as, as an actor who I think uh, your career has been built around 
I don't, for lack of a better word, smaller projects, independent films. <laughs> about flaws, exactly. Yeah, your career is built about flaws. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. In incredible works, works of <laughs> art that you've been that you've been a part of. But oh, thank you. you know, nothing. You know, Tom Cruise or Matt Damon are people who are like doing movies like on this scale, on or maybe not even on this scale, but you know what I mean, on a regular basis, and are sort of used to the helicopter with a paparazzi dangling trying to get photographs. How did that feel for you as a as an actor? Does it feel like a different step in your career, or are you just kind of day by day going with the punches? I, I, at the beginning, you start trying to predict everything. How is this going to affect me? How am I going to be protected? How am, how am I going to make sure I don't go crazy? Uh, and it's impossible to, to, to predict those things. You just have to make sure you're around people that loves you, that reminds you you're nothing, and that you're the same guy who doing that theater play that just <laughs> seven people wanted to see. Uh, and, and I'm trying not to get used to it because in January I go back to my life in Mexico and uh, probably to put together a project that is going to be, again, very personal. And Are you something that you're going to direct again? And I'm thinking of it, yeah. And uh, But I, I have to say that it's very nice to kind of know how this works, you know, and know that there can be integrity in this world uh, because uh, I felt that. I felt we... We, we had the freedom, we wanted it, to do the film we wanted to do. There was, uh, on set, we were improvising, we, all the actors were involved in, 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 in all discussions with writer, with the director, with producer. We were part of it, you know? It's like that idea of like when you do big studio films, you become the puppet of people that are not even there and are sitting in the desk somewhere else. It's so not true, you know? I felt all the freedom I've probably never felt before, wow. you know? Because also you have all the tools, all the toys. Uh, anything can happen. You, if it's not right, you'll do it again and again and again till it's right. There's the, that sense of like, oh my God, this train is going and if I don't jump, I might lose it. Uh, I didn't have it on this, on this set. Is there a part of you as a director now having seen how these films can be made in a personal way would like to also direct a movie of this size and scale? I think it's it's about uh, I think it's you shouldn't think about the size or the scale. You have to think about that freedom and uh, and and that connection with that honest connection with with yourself, you know, if you really have something to say. Like uh, when I saw Gareth working here or when I when I thought about myself, it's like I am being part of a film I'm a fan of. Uh, I shared with my son before I knew I was going to be part of it. It's as, as important as that, you know. So that connection is so special and it makes my work feel very personal. Even though we're surrounded by 800 people and helicopters trying to take pictures, at the end I'm doing a film I really want to share with my son and a film I would would go watch as audience. So if I find that connection, I can be part of any project. It doesn't matter the size or, or who's behind it, you know? Uh, I have a random question for you. A few years ago, you made a movie with Will Ferrell, right? Ca Casa de Me Padre, right? That's correct, yeah. And, uh, but before that movie was made, Will Ferrell did a stage show as George W. Bush. Uh, I don't know if anybody ever saw it. It was at the end of Bush's presidency. It was like, you know, you're welcome, America, George W. Bush on stage. And one of the main jokes of it was just saying your name over and over and over again. Yeah. You just go, Diego Luna. Did you ever see this? And what did you think of it? <laughs> and did you ask him about it? Because it's, it's not even a written joke. It's just a randomly saying your name over and over again in the show. I've always been curious. I asked him, and, and he said to me, I don't know. I, I, I thought it was funny. There's, there's nothing more ridiculous than... George Bush trying to say your name. And I go like, <laughs> what? <laughs> but apparently it was very funny because when I saw the video, everyone is laughing like crazy in the show. I was one day asleep, like same story. And, and there, there was, uh, or there is, sorry, I don't know, but uh, this radio anchor um, in, in LA called El Cucuy de la Mañana. And, uh, and this guy just has a show from, from five or six a.m. till very late, or had back then, I don't know. And I received a call from El Cucuy de la Mañana. Uh, we have here Will Farrell, and we, wanna, uh, we want him to chat with you because uh, he's using you for, for his show. And I went like, shut up, and I just hung. <laughs> and then two years later, he was actually there, and he was trying to explain why he was 
doing that joke, and that he has no explanation. <laughs> but it made me think, like, what is it with my name? You know, it's like. <laughs> I mean, I didn't. I never thought of that until I saw him do it, and I was like, why? And I asked myself the question, why is this funny? It's very. I'm. I'm laughing, but I don't know why this is funny. I can't explain uh -huh. this. <laughs> That's Will Farrell also. That can be just done by Will Farrell. He's amazing. I mean, he can make you laugh with the news of today. Yeah. He's, he's the funny he's the funniest yeah. guy out there. You're you're you know, one of your one of a, one of your films that I, I love very dearly. I love his work as Harmony Korean's Mr. Lonely, where you play uh, a Michael Jackson impersonator incredibly well. The your moves were unbelievable in that movie. Thank you. And I've always uh, and I've and I've wondered how much, have, that exactly. how much have you kept with you? How often do you do it? And how long did it take you to be yeah. able to do those moves? It, it took me a while. And it was amazing because when he, when he told me, I want to do this film with you, I was like, really? It's also in many ways his, his comeback film, if I remember correctly. He'd been, he hadn't made a, 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 a movie in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is his comeback and, and, uh, and a very important film for him because uh, he was more mature and he wanted to do like a classical approach. And, uh, and anyway, but the point is I, I went to meet the, the, uh, a Michael Jackson impersonator in Mexico, the one that gets all the jobs. And this guy... <laughs> <laughs> All the jobs. <laughs> yeah. Don't you say it that way? Or no, I know you do, but it's kind of like, does he get all the jobs that a Michael Jackson impersonator will get, or just all the jobs? No, 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 <laughs> just the, exactly. <laughs> just the Michael Jackson ones. And, uh, and, and he said, like, yeah, 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 I'll teach you. And I spent, like, three weeks with him. His name, his name is Michael. No, what? Why are funny. you laughing? It's funny to me. I, I mean, <laughs> you laugh a lot with names, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just said Michael. <laughs> well, he I think it's funny that Michael Jackson's impersonator's real name is Michael. Oh, his real name is Michael, and uh, and uh, he's very good at that. And and there's moments where you you feel he thinks he's even better than than the other Michael. Are there yeah. moments where you think he feels like he actually is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I mean, Michael does it this way. I do it this way, and it's th I think it's better. Uh, and uh, and you go like, okay. <laughs> Let me let me try and uh, the kick and the and it was so much fun, so much fun. I remember a week before we started shooting, I went to I trained like two months in Mexico, then a few months in 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 Europe, and then I went in front of the Pompidou Museum in Paris, where there's other performers there, and I went one morning of a Saturday to dance there. Uh, I made like twenty euros in like half an hour or an hour. It was. Pretty good, pretty good. Till the kids realized I just could move for a minute. And then I started repeating myself. Which is all I had to do for the film, right? I mean, just a minute is That's ages long, in the film. Yeah. So I just had a good minute of performance. So the kids started to go like, ah, oh, he's not really good. And, and they talk like just in front of you as if you couldn't understand, you know? <laughs> like, oh my God, he's doing the same. Let's go. This is bullshit. Ah, boring. <laughs> And they would leave me there, and then the other performers would come and say, who did you pay to be here? And I go like, what do you mean? <laughs> this is the street, right? And, and we're in Paris, like in freedom and everything. And, uh, and they go like, no, 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 we pay to be here. And uh, at the end, they took the 20 euros from me. Who do they pay? Each other or yeah, like? Them, themselves, right. yeah. I wasn't part of the clan, and they said, you know, that worked. They, yeah, there was like the statue that is always like this, and but it was <laughs> kind of cool. He unfroze to come take your money. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was the moment when I said, "Okay, I'm ready. I can do this film." And then I went into that crazy journey. It's, it's an incredible film, and you're and you're amazing in it. Do you still pull out your your one minute of routines? Is like a great party trick. Uh, now I have to be very drunk, but yeah, <laughs> there's a few times where I've done it. Uh, yeah, there has to be someone that I really want to impress. Who have you? Who is there? Anyone that we would know, like that? Uh, that I you, really that hope you not to impress. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Like, no, no. I'm just saying. At a party? Yeah, it has to be like. I mean, it's something. Once it's on. Bruce Willis wants to see your, uh, your no, Michael it's... Jackson impression, Diego. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not talking about that kind of like oh, okay. special people. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I'm just saying that uh, I. It's a tool I know I have now. To open certain kind of doors, but uh, but it's kind of like weird if you start doing Michael Jackson moves suddenly out of nowhere. It's kind of bizarre. Yeah. 
Yeah, I guess it's better. Let's open it up to the audience for some questions. I'm sure you guys got questions out there. Right here. Hi. Um, so, Gael was here yesterday. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys, if you had to go <laughs> through that. And since you brought up y tu mamá también, I was wondering, are you planning on working with him again anytime soon? Yeah, I mean, I hope, I hope so. I really hope so. Uh, we do it every, like, two, three years, and now it's been a long time. Um, we, we, we are part of many projects together, but not necessarily as actors. And every time I do something, I share it with him and the other way around. And I, I was just literally in the phone when I came in here uh, because it's his birthday today. Just if you don't know, you should. Happy birthday. Yeah, you should call him or something. Um, I'll give you the, his number. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, one day we should do it because there's something special that happens when we work together. Like that chemistry, you cannot work that out with someone you don't know. You know, It's years of knowing each other. But we don't know what to do yet. Uh, hopefully theater, so we can do it over and over and over. That could be fun. Next question. Hey, Diego. Um, so I know there's been a big emphasis on um, the fact that it's a war film. So I was wondering how much of your own stunts that you did yourself. I did most of them, uh, and that was the exciting part. You know, Gareth at the beginning said to me like, "Well, uh, you have to go into an intense training and." Uh, uh, you're going to have a military training um, for two or three weeks, and I want you to... Uh, I, I even went camping with them, you know, and, uh, and did the whole thing and, and, uh, and patrolling and everything. Uh, it was weird. We were in the studios, patrolling the studios as, as if we were, you know, in the, in the woods, you know, in the middle of a civil war and, or something. And it was, it was very cool. He gave us all the tools we needed in order to actually be the characters. Then obviously after two or three weeks, you will be all injured and like, oh my God, you, can, you, you don't become a soldier in two weeks, right? Uh, but, uh, but it was exciting to understand what they go through because that would allow us to, to, to actually portray these characters with some sense of, of realism. And, uh, and we did everything. We were running every day, jumping, climbing, um, running on water, on sand, uh, using the weapons. Uh, uh, it was exciting. It was exciting. Uh, and obviously, because it's a Star Wars film, you always want to, at least I always wanted to do another one and go further and further. And yes, we, we, I ended up injured many times in these seven months. I still have an injury here that I, but it's kind of cool because it's like, ah, oh, this is the Star Wars one, you know? <laughs> you go like, yeah, oh, it Star hurts Wars here. Star Wars yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I have a broken rave, but it's a Star Wars, you know? <laughs> uh, next question. Hey Diego, thank hey. you for being here. Uh, what was your favorite moment on set when you first stepped in? It was when when I arrived the very first day. I I got to to London uh, before rehearsals. I arrived to the set and uh, to the um, studio. Sorry, and and the producer says, "Oh, go visit Gareth. He's doing a camera test." in one of the, the, the studios. So I arrive and there is Gareth in an Imperial uh, station and uh, he's sitting next to the monitor and he says, welcome, oh, it's so nice to have you here. We're gonna have so much fun. And then I start hearing <laughs> and I go like, Shh, no, no, wait, no, walking away. And, he, and, and Gareth was just in front of me with the same face like, oh, there he comes. And I turn and there he comes, this guy, this two meter and something, Darth Vader is coming to us uh, to ask Gareth if, if he should come in through the left or the right, you know? <laughs> but, but he had the thing, the, the, a little machine. Oh, oh I, can, I can tell you this because he, he told this to the, the Mexican press. Uh, the guy that was doing that day, the test, uh, he was an, like a, a guy that normally dresses as, as, as Darth and does events and stuff like that. Oh, wow. And imagine that guy. I mean, I am. I was the luckiest Mexican here, but this is this is a guy that has been working like this, not knowing they're gonna do more films. And one day he gets, you know, called to 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 play Dart in this in this camera test. Amazing. Anyway, that's amazing. The guy was there, and that's the moment when I went like, shit. 
uh, I'm doing Star Wars, you know? This guy still gets me to freak out, you know? I'm, I'm, I became a six-year-old in a second, and then I was reminded, no, you are now you are doing a film. Now you're on the other side. Now you're supposed to be delivering something, right? And... Uh, and since then, every day, something would happen on set. Like, there's so many references to, to A New Hope that, uh, th that for me was just incredible to be on those sets. And everything is real. There's no green screens or anything. Everything is built and everything works. Uh, and it's, it's incredible. I mean, it's the dream of any kid, you know? And I was there. And I, I think we have time for one more question right here. Uh, hi, uh, Diego. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Book of Life, and I, uh, as I love cool. hearing your voice. It's like naturally. Here, here's Manolo. Um, I was wondering <laughs> if uh, if you'd heard anything about uh, the any sequel, or if you know what's coming up. I, I did hear it's not happening. <laughs> oh, it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear it's not happening. No question answered. Sorry. You know what happened? It's weird. I don't know. I'm so sad because uh, the film is one of the films I love the most. Uh, I, as a parent, I can say it's one of the smartest films you can show to your kids. Uh, it's a great way to start talking about that thing that we inevitably have to talk to them, uh, which means what, what, what does that mean? And, and how do we handle this that we can never completely understand? And I really love the tradition of Mexico of celebrating the memory of people, you know, to keep them, uh, to keep them there around you. And I, I, I mean, I thought it was perfect. I, I thought this is the film that every kid is gonna watch, and it didn't happen. Uh, it didn't happen. Uh, so um, now they're watching it in DVD and VOD and da da da. But in the cinema, it didn't do that well. So um, sadly, uh, I don't think it's happening. I would be the happiest if it happens. Uh, I, I even got to record eight songs with with Gustavo Santolaya. Yeah. That's a, like a dream, you know. I grew up listening to all the bands he produced in Latin America, and uh, and then he was the one that said, "Yes, you can sing." And I go like, "No, no, no way! I'm 35 back then, and I, I haven't sang ever. It's gonna be impossible." And he said, "No, no, no!" And he started teaching me, and 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 he he was the yeah he produced the whole thing and and made it sound quite okay. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Well, Diego, thank you so much for being here. Rogue One comes out December 16th. It looks amazing. Congratulations on it. I look forward to your movie oh. next year. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for very being much. Here. Thank you, thank everyone. You. This was a lot of fun.